Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Masika Michael. I'm a teacher of chemistry and biology. I teach at Nasakon Girls in West Pokot County. Today, I would like to take you through the topic of a mall. The subtopic is back titration. And before you walk through this with me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification button so that you can be notified the, when I upload the next video. So back titration actually entails most of the time uh, three reagents and most of the time you could be having just an example you have a carbonate uh, which is in solid form then you have uh, an acid like for example hydrochloric acid then you have a base and then the concentration of the acid and the base are known and most of the time uh, you will be asked to react the solid which is a carbonate with the, an acid excess acid so that the carbonate react with the, reacts with part of the acid and you get a solution then the resulting solution is titrated against a base and the base is going to react with the acid that did not react with the carbonate when the titration experiment is going on. Allow me to take you through a detailed uh, elaboration of uh, how back titration takes place uh, through this question that is here. Uh, you are provided with solid air and that is 0 0.5 grams of a divalent metal carbonate MCO3. Then solution B, which is 0 0.5 molar HCl hydrochloric acid. Then solution C, that is 1 molar sodium hydroxide. Then uh, using these reagents, you are required to determine the relative atomic mass of M in the metal carbonate MCO3. And the procedure is given. And the first uh, the first uh, process is that put all solid air into a 250 cubic centimeter conical flask, then add 30 cubic centimeters of solution B to solid air, then add three drops of phenolphthalein indicator to the resulting solution and titrate against solution C, then repeat the experiment two more times and complete the table below. Then we have four months for completing uh, the table. But now before we discuss about how the table is completed, uh, I want us to have a clear understanding of what is happening in this procedure and how the reactions uh, that are happening there are going to take place. You can see it begins with adding 30 cubic centimeters of, uh, of a solution B, which is hydrochloric acid, uh, so with air which is a metal carbonate which means we are going to react our carbonate with an acid but now remember in this reaction uh, part of the acid is going to react with the carbonate but part of it will remain now the part of the acid that is hydrochloric acid that remains is the one that is going to react with solution C that is sodium hydroxide during the titration process when the titration process is going on now that we have now understood how the reactions are going to take place. Or maybe just to add on, in this uh, reaction, hydrochloric acid is going to react twice. First of all, it's going to react, part of it is going to react with the, the metal carbonate, then the remaining part is going to react with sodium hydroxide. So hydrochloric acid is in the middle of two, of two uh, reagents, in the, uh, that is between a carbonate and sodium hydroxide. So, now that we have understood that uh, they are looking at this table, you can see we have four marks for completing the table plus one, which is written here, calculate the average volume of solution C. So this table uh, attracts five marks, and which can be easily scored. And according to cases, C marking uh, just by completing this table with values that are realistic, you get one mark. Complete table, one mark. So don't fail to complete the table. Number two, there's another mark for this mark, the second mark. 
have you uh, like in this table you can see all the values have been computed to one decimal place. So this this one also attracts one other mark. Number three, there is a mark called principle of average. And in this for you to get this mark, uh, this one is called uh, when, when I look at how you have collected the average volume, especially if you have average values that lie within the range of plus or minus zero point two then you get that mark. Like here, uh, because the volume of base used according to the table here is 5.1 for the first titration, 4.9 for the second titration, and 5.0 for the third titration. Therefore, to get the average volume, I will use all values because all of them lie within a range of plus or minus 0 0.2. So I'll take 5.1 plus 4.9 plus 5.0 over 3, then I get 5.0 cubic centimeters as my average volume to get the third mark the principle of averaging. Then the fourth mark we call it accuracy and for you to get that mark you need to be very uh, accurate and perform the experiment uh, without making errors and there is another final one called final accuracy which also requires you just to be uh, careful and perform the experiment follow the procedure uh, accurately without making mistakes or errors for you to, to get uh, that uh, mark, that free mark. Then, hmm, now that we have know how to get, now that we know how to get the five marks on the table, they are marks that follow on calculations. So let's move to part B. Now in part B, we have been asked to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used. So when we come back to the information that we have gathered and the data that we have gathered, we find that the volume of solution C, because it's a base, that one is the base, and that base is sodium hydroxide. So we have the volume of solution C used, and then we have the molarity of solution C. Now that we have the volume and we have the molarity, we get the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used. We can just take the molarity, which is zero, which is one times 5, that is the volume of 1,000 and you get 0 0.005 moles of sodium hydroxide. That is the volume of sodium hydroxide that was used during uh, this uh, titration experiment. Then remember, this sodium hydroxide, these moles of sodium hydroxide were reacting with hydrochloric acid in the mixture of A and B. And that hydrochloric acid is the one that remained after the hydrochloric acid had reacted with the part of the hydrochloric acid had reacted with the metal carbonate. Then, from a two moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with sodium hydroxide. Now, that is the moles of excess hydrochloric acid. Those are the moles of sodium hydroxide, moles of hydrochloric acid that remain after part of it I get with the carbonate. So for those ones we just use the mole ratio for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and HCl and since the mole ratio is one to one therefore moles of hydrochloric acid is equal to moles of sodium hydroxide and therefore that means that moles of hydrochloric acid that that were in excess or that reacted with the base are 0 0.005 moles 0 0.005 moles then C, find the moles of hydrochloric acid in 30 cubic centimeters of the original solution. That is original hydrochloric acid. Now, original hydrochloric acid, let's, let's find, let's trace the original hydrochloric acid in the, in, the, in the data given. When I look at the original hydrochloric acid, it was called solution B. And it was 0 0.5 mole. And the volume of that original hydrochloric acid that we have was that. And therefore, in that we know the molarity of the original acid and its volume, we can be able to collect its moles. That those are the total moles of hydrochloric acid before it reacted with anything. So that will be given by 0 0.5 times 30 over 1,000, and you get 0 0.015 moles. So those are the total moles of hydrochloric acid before it took part in any reaction. Before uh, we added sodium carbonate, before it was titrated with uh, sodium hydroxide. Those are the total moles of uh, uh, 
of hydrochloric acid that were available. Then, uh, Roman II, uh, we find the moles of the metal carbonate that reacted with hydrochloric acid. Now that uh, we know the total moles of hydrochloric acid uh, that was available, 0 0.15, then we know the part of this hydrochloric acid that reacted with the, with, the, the, uh, with the sodium hydroxide. So we know that moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the so with sodium hydroxide plus moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the carbon should give us the total moles of uh, hydrochloric acid, which is 0 0.015. And then if we get moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the carbonate, we shall take the total moles of hydrochloric acid, which is 0 0.015, minus the moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with sodium hydroxide, which is 0 0.005. Therefore, moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the carbonate equals to 0 0.015 minus 0 0.005. And therefore, we get 0 0.01. This 0 0.01 is the moles of HCl that reacted with the carbonate. That reacted with the carbonate. But now the question is asking for the moles of the carbonate that travel with HCl. Now that we know the moles of HCl that travel with the carbonate, we can write an equation for the relation between hydrochloric acid and the, and the divalent metal carbonate. And this is the equation. That is MCO3 plus 2 moles of hydrochloric acid to form MCL2 plus carbon 4 oxide plus water. And from the equation, we find that the mole ratio of the metal carbonate to hydrochloric acid is 1 of the metal carbonate to 2 of hydrochloric acid. And therefore, to get the moles of the carbonate, we shall take the moles of hydrochloric acid and divide them by 2. And we get 0 0.01 divided by 2 to get 0 0.005 moles. So this 0 0.005 moles are the moles of the carbonate that reacted with hydrochloric acid. And therefore, we know the moles of the carbonate, and we have been asked in the next question about the relative formula mass of the carbonate, RFM of the carbonate. Now, looking at the data given, looking at the data given about the carbonate, which is solid A, that is the carbonate. Zero point, solid A, that is 0 0.5 grams of the divalent metal carbonate, MCO3. So we know the mass of the divalent metal carbonate, and we also know the moles now, they are 0 0.005. If we know the moles and we know the mass, we can be able to collect the relative formula mass since relative formula mass is equal to mass given of a number of moles. And here our mass given is 0 0.5 and the number of moles is 0 0.005. And when you do that division, you get 1000. So the molar mass of the carbonate or the relative formula mass of the carbonate is 100. Then, you have also been asked to determine the relative atomic mass of metal M in the, in the carbonate MCO3. Now to get this, uh, we are looking for the value of X or M. So we are giving letter X plus 12, 12 for, for carbon plus 48 for oxygen is equals to 100. So X plus 60 equals to 100. So the value of X equals 100 minus 60, which is 40. So this 40 will be the relative atomic mass of the carbonate and that is the end of a, a sample of a sample back titration experiment thank you